First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, Correctional Officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but Correctional Officer. Uh, How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Gandhi, host of Tear Talk. I had a great question that came out. Well, actually, more of a concern. Someone messaged me and stated that they had to do something that they feel mixed about. And they wanted to know my thoughts on it. And I've, obviously, if I, as I do this, it's going to be our thoughts because collectively we're a community. So I think that if we show support here and give them advice or tell them how we feel, this could actually make him feel better in, in regards to the choice he had to make. So the basic concern that he brought to my attention was that he developed a close friendship with one of the officers on the job and they've been friends for a while. And... The officer that he became friends with wind up telling him that he's been smuggling in contraband. So, without being too specific, he told me how he reacted, which in my mind is what you're supposed to do. And again, I'll tell you what I would have done and would love your opinion too as to what you would do. But I guess because it's his friend... He feels mixed about what he did, even though what he did was the right thing, which is eventually turn him in. But I want to provide a perspective because, as I said, he feels mixed about it. And I understand there's emotion involved here, but I thought we could also provide a community perspective. And I think that he could take a lot from that. So when we go back from our sponsors. Let's talk about what would happen or what would we do if someone that we were friends with, whether it was a friend before that we got onto the job or a friend as we worked at the job we met at the job what how would we react what would we do if they told us that they were doing something criminal what would be our next step and i think it's a good topic today so if you guys have it to show tear talk is for you you brave men and women that work that front line so please subscribe interact engage comment hit that bell that bell is going to notify you every time i post a video i stand by for our sponsors when we come back let's talk about what would you do if a friend of yours, a good friend of yours, who you worked with on the job in corrections, told you that they were smuggling in contraband, told you that they were doing something criminal, stand by for a sponsor. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsor. Now we all know the answer to this question is obvious, right? Eventually, the person's gonna have to be turned in. Whether you encourage the person to do it themselves, you're gonna be involved in that because you have a possible security threat. You don't know what the contraband is, you know, and in this case, let's say it's a phone, drugs, weapon, it's emergent. So once it's sent your way, you have to do the right thing. So even if you encourage them to turn themselves in, you're gonna be behind them making sure that they do because it poses a major security concern. So. You don't really want to delay in the reporting of this. It has to be done immediately. Because again, we have brothers and sisters in the wall that could be affected by this individual's choice to smuggle in contraband. So we have to protect ultimately the integrity of the facility, uh, but obviously specifically uh, staff, inmates, visitors, volunteers, whatever the case may be. Now, the reason why some people think the answer is difficult is because there's emotion involved, right? This is a friend. This is someone that we could have grown up with. This is someone that we could have just developed a bond with at the job. Maybe there was a few codes and he was there or she was there and they had my back and they saved my life. I mean, imagine that bit of a conflict. This person saved my life in the prison. You know, so again, but the answer is obvious, right? The answer is we're going to have to be... in turn that person in, whether again you encourage it, but you're still going to be behind the scenes making sure the person does the right thing. But you really have to picture yourself in this person's position. Because we know the answer is obvious, but if we really think about it, really put ourselves in this person's position, 
We could see where the conflict would be. You know, we could see that. I could see it. Even though I'm still going to do the right thing. I never said I wasn't going to do the right thing. But the point is you could see why some people would hesitate. Because they're going to let the emotion, the connection, the bond supersede the right thing. And the right thing being is you got a security concern. And you got someone right now that broke the law or could potentially have committed a criminal act. So obviously in our profession, we work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We take an oath, obviously, to protect and serve, and that oath doesn't just include the 8, the 10, the 12, the 16 hours we're working. It goes beyond that. So when you have someone who tells you, hey, this is what I did, conversation stops because first off, they just pulled you into their world. So you are now in the know. So there was no effort to protect you because they told you. So the fact that they brought you in, what are they also doing? They're bringing responsibility on you. Hell, shit, if you were really my friend, you wouldn't have told me this, sad to say. Technically, if you were really my friend or my brother, you wouldn't be doing this to begin with. But, you know, you wouldn't have told me this. Now the fact that you told me this, you know I'm put in a position to have to act. I have to act. And, and not just because the job tells me I have to act, but morally. I have to act. So once the person tells you this is what I've done, push the brakes. This is what we're going to do next. That's how I would respond. And the steps are not going to be something that you like. The steps you're going to be is you're going to turn yourself in. And if you don't do it, I'm going to do it. And I'm speaking because I've been involved in a situation like this and it was very hard. You know, because there is a moment of hesitation. And then you have to remind yourself, you're hesitating, why? Because of emotion. I'm blinded by emotion. I'm blinded by the bond that I've developed with this individual. But when shit goes down, that's not going to stand up. That's not going to protect you from doing the right thing. It's not. Because people are going to look at you and say, okay, but in your position, this is what you were responsible for. So it goes outside of your friendship. It goes into that professional role and the oath that you swore. So, again, the reason why it's complicated to many is because they let the emotions speak ahead of the safety and security concerns. They let emotions supersede that. And that's where the issue is. So the right step is to encourage that person to turn themselves in. But again, if they're hesitant in doing so, you have to do it because of the emergent need to react. Because again, possible contraband. But again, giving the person the respect, you got to turn yourself in. I'll be right behind you. I'll give you support as you do it. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you don't do it, I'm going to do it. And... Sad thing is, is sometimes you work with peers who don't understand why you took that step. And it's sad because they weren't put in your shoes. They didn't have something just fall in their lap. Because nine times out of ten, if they did, they would be doing the same exact thing that you're doing. But the sad thing is they won't say that and they'll push towards what the peers are thinking. Like, oh, you're a snitch and they make you feel like you're an outcast. And that's what stops most people from doing the right thing. That's the scary thing, but that is the truth. What stops people in our profession from doing the right thing is the fear of being an outcast. That's the truth. And the sad thing is, is we need to support the person who has to make that difficult decision. And it is a difficult decision because of the emotion. Again, the answer is obvious, but it becomes a difficult decision because of the bond. And I'm telling you, if we put ourselves in their shoes, we know it could be a difficult decision. But all because it's difficult doesn't mean that we're not going to do the right thing. We're still going to do the right thing. So in response to the person that sent me the message, you did what was supposed to be done. And your feelings that are going on that's mixed, it has nothing to do with the fact that you did the right thing. 
And you're more concerned about the bond that you created with this individual. You can't let that stop you from doing the right thing. Because that person did something wrong. And then by telling you, they got you involved. If they wanted to protect you, they wouldn't have told you anything to begin with. And if they had any respect for you and respect for the family, they wouldn't have done what they did. So you shouldn't feel any type of mixed feelings. You should know that what you did was right because it's within your prescribed role to protect and serve. And in the long run, the sacrifice that you feel that you made was to do what? To protect the many other that work in your facility. Your brothers and sisters who are doing the right thing to protect and serve. So again, I know the choice was difficult. Bravo for doing the right choice. Hopefully you get the support from your peers. That they don't push you out because that's the concern most of the time. Because if they encourage the right thing, you wouldn't have these mixed feelings. But you did what needed to be done to protect the many. And the person that said that, that they smuggled this stuff in or whatever it is, they have no respect for you. Especially your well-being, because don't forget you work in that facility as well. Respect for their brothers and sisters that work behind the wall. Respect for their job. Respect for their role to protect and serve. But you do. And that's what makes you different. Emotions aside, great decision that you made. And I know it was hard, but eventually what you did is you protected the many who are doing what they're supposed to do. And I have respect for that. I do. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Guys, now if you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. Before I say goodbye, I wonder if you guys went through something similar to this. And if you can, maybe not specifically share what that response was. Maybe a little generalized. But I think it would be good just to kind of have that support. Because the feelings shouldn't be mixed. You did the right thing. All right, guys, take care. Oh.